RV is an abbreviation for recreational vehicle. These things are very nice, right? Have you ever been in one? Okay. So what's inside of something like that? Do you think they're going to have a refrigerator in that? You bet they're going to have a refrigerator in there. How does that refrigerator work? You can run it electric mode or gas mode. A little switch, it says 12V, 120V, or GAS, which is the propane gas. So I can run off a of gas, I can run off a of DC 12 volt, or I can run off an of AC 120. What is going on? You look at the back of this. This is about the best picture I could get of the back of one. I don't own one. Inside somewhere has to be an evaporator. Inside, the refrigerant's coming in and evaporating. Outside in the back, let me try and break it down for you. This canister right here is heavily insulated, and that's what they call a boiler. At the bottom of the boiler, when you're running in propane mode, it's burning a flame. It's burning propane. I want a refrigerator. I don't want a stove. Yeah, it's burning propane. Okay? And there's some fluid that's coming in here, and it gets hot, and it's like a percolator in an old-fashioned coffee. You ever seen one of those tubes with the heat real intense right on the bottom, and the tube and it spurts up, push, pops it up, pops it up, and then the liquid drains over to the grounds in an old-fashioned per. It's a percolator, a boiler. And what happens is you have uh, water, yeah, yeah, but you also have something absorbed in the water, NH3. That's going to be our refrigerant. That's eventually going to get to the evaporator coil and provide. The water doesn't provide the cooling in the evaporator. The ammonia does. All right. So it percolates it up, and it builds up the pressure and also the temperature. It's much higher temperature. Then you have a tube that comes off right here. You really can't see a poor picture. Did they insulate that tube? No. But you know what? It's hot. It's hot. But they want to get that tube and the fluid to flow up in that tube until it gets up to this device here. You don't see it too well, but that is a bunch of fins. What do you think the fins are to promote? Heat transfer to the air. To the air. So it's going to reject heat to the warm surrounding air in the backside. Usually these are, uh, they have a good air gap between them. And then if you look back there, there's like a chimney effect to go out the RV. You're going to have to dump some heat to the environment. It's a refrigerator. Better to dump it and push it out of the RV. So now this is going to dump it off. Well, guess what they're doing right here? Do you think this is uh, a lot of water or do you think it's a lot of NH3 ammonia? It's it's like our generator. It's trying to just get a vapor stream of ammonia to go up. Think about this, that it's hot. The ammonia and water want to separate. And the ammonia goes out. And now it flows up. When it gets up here, what does that ammonia want to do when it gets into the thinned condenser section? It's going to condense, isn't it? When it condenses you're going to have liquid ammonia and you introduce another gas the other gas is a, a hydrogen H2 oh this gives me a headache just trying to describe it you mean I have water I have ammonia and hydrogen H2 in this system yep you do tell me a little bit about the molar mass of water off the top of your head how what is the Molar mass of water? 18. 18. 18. The molar mass of hydrogen? 2. And then how about this one? 17. Very good, right? 14, 15, 16, 17, right? All right. I come up with a finned condenser. It came in, vapor. Guess what? It all comes out. It's all liquid. It's all liquid ammonia coming out of the condenser. So you're about ready to put it into the evaporator. So you add in hydrogen. Okay, they're going to add in a gas hydrogen on top. 
So right away, you have a tube which would be filled completely with liquid ammonia, but what's flowing over top of it? Hydrogen gas. That means you have a two-phase region, gas, liquid. So what does the liquid ammonia want to do? Some of it will want to go into the vapor state for equilibrium. When it wants to go into the vapor state, it starts to boil. It can't go into the vapor state without breaking those molecular bonds, right? Those intermolecular bonds. It takes energy, the liquid drops temperature. The hydrogen flows a little faster over that liquid layer through the evaporator. So it's sort of sweeping the ammonia that's vaporized away. More ammonia says, I need to go into the vapor state. They start, it starts to boil, evaporate. Drops the temperature. That's how it gets cold in the evaporator. I know I'm giving you a real fast overview on that. But now what do I have coming out of the evaporator? I should have shown evaporator here, evap. I have a mixture of NH3. All of it maybe is evaporated to provide maximum cooling. I don't want any liquid coming out of the evaporator. I want to get it all evaporated. And the hydrogen, which you could think of as a little racehorse sweeping over the top, going a little faster. You do get a mixture coming out. Now what do I want to do with this? Uh, well, I've got to get back over here to this boiler and I've got to get a, uh, where I'm providing the heat, move my flame, okay? I need to get a strong solution of H2O and NH3. It goes up to this percolator boiler. What went up? NH3. What goes out of the percolator off the top? The weak solution water with a little bit of ammonia still in it but it's warm okay it came in here cool and it goes out hot or warm at the top okay so hmm, I've got to finish this loop because <laughs> I got ammonia I've got hydrogen so you put it through this big contraption over here what's this big contraption over here doing it's an absorber, absorber. I've got to have ammonia flowing one way, hydrogen flowing another way, water flowing one way. Okay, this is not that easy to describe. So what I'll do is, it's thin, so I'm rejecting some heat to the surroundings. I'm just going to show it as a box, and I'm going to show it as different layers for contacting, okay? So this weak solution comes in, and it's percolating over. And it's being cooled as it's flowing through this because it's rejecting heat to the surrounding. As the water is cooled, it can absorb some more ammonia, true? Now, the ammonia is pretty strong here, so you want to do a counter current flow if you can, where the weak solution, when it comes out at the bottom, is now back to strong. Make sense? And it's going to be as strong if it's in the presence of a really dense ammonia, a lot of ammonia. And so this is where you have the most ammonia in the uh, vapor state coming in. So you flow those counter current. What you'd like to do when you get to the top here is how much ammonia would you like to have right there? No more ammonia. Well, what would you have left? Just pure hydrogen. Just pure hydrogen. So the hydrogen's going in a loop. It's not absorbing with anything. And the ammonia, you, it's, it's uh, just all vapor here, and you're bringing it in, and you're passing it countercurrent. You want to get all that ammonia stripped out of the hydrogen gas loop, and you want to get it all absorbed. That the 12 volt will run on from your car battery or your RV battery, or you'll have a plug in and you'll run AC. So they'll have two of them. And sometimes those will burn out, and then it won't work on electric mode. Somehow, yeah, it's uh, vented um, to get out of there. Plus, you have to reject the heat. 
off of the absorber and especially off of this coil up here, the condenser. See, you have to reject it off the condenser and you reject off this absorber coil. Uh, if you want a rich solution, do you want it to be hot or cold? Cold, you want it cold, okay. If you come in here, you then apply the burner and it percolates it up. It looks like right here they're showing you a chimney with a little baffle to promote the convective heat transfer between the flame and the surface, okay? And then uh, the chimney to get, it, get rid of it safely. And then you can see it percolates, it comes back down on the side, it gives up the ammonia vapor, the ammonia vapor comes up, it starts to condense, it's liquid ammonia, but you add in some, uh, here I'm sorry, keep going down, you add in right in here, this is the liquid, okay, you gotta follow the path. It makes it more complicated. They would like to cool the liquid ammonia, so pass it through the evaporator so it really gets nice and cold. Then let it go into the presence of the hydrogen. You can see the little droplets of the ammonia becoming, there's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Hey, I lost one. Evaporation. One, two, three. Oh, I lost another. More evaporation in the evaporator. One, two. You're evaporating the ammonia as it dribbles through and the hydrogen sweeping over it taking away the hydrogen and the ammonia vapor. This is all the, you could have a low temperature evaporator and a high temperature evaporator, basically a freezer and a refrigerator compartment. Keep your ice cream cold, keep your uh, soda pop cold. And then uh, you need to get it back to this absorber coil down in here. And so uh, the, it's so complicated, I'm sorry, but you have the weak solution going to come up to the top with the water. It's going to go dribbling down. And now you can see the droplets are getting more and they're getting darker, meaning that it's picking up the ammonia that's flowing the other way. And that collects. The hydrogen is dumped down here. You try to get off the pure hydrogen. The hydrogen comes up, switches around, and then dumps in. Actually, I'm sorry, the hydrogen is flowing. The hydrogen's flowing in the darker yellow inside the tube and then dumps here and then flows back around. Yes, sir. Are they, in this illustration, are they preheating it before it gets to the boiling? Is that what the heat exchanger at the bottom is? Or is oh, yeah, that's a heat exchanger to promote because the weak solution's hot, and now the strong solution, you're just going to want to heat it up, so you just promote heat transfer make it a little more efficient. Here's a simpler illustration. What's this one? The generator. What do you do? You burn something, propane, or you put a heater there. What's this? Separator. Get the ammonia out. Cool it. Get a liquid. I know this is simpler. You flow the hydrogen over and then that makes it evaporate. Okay. Then you collect it up, flow it back this way, separate out to have pure hydrogen to make that loop. The ammonia is going to be absorbed, so you don't want any ammonia from here. The weak solution becomes a strong solution. All right. Thank you very much. We'll see you.